ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் பேக் திஸ் இஸ் பிபி ஸோ பிஃபோர் ஸ்டார்டிங் தி வீடியோ டுடே ஐ ஹாவ் பாட் ப்ராட் யூ கொஷின்ஸ் விச் ஆர் பேஸ்ட் ஆன் இயர் நோஸ் அண்ட் த்ரூட் ஸோ பிஃபோர் ஸ்டார்டிங் த வீடியோ ஐ ரிக்வஸ்ட் எவ்ரி நர்ஸ் டு சப்ஸ்கிரைப் அவர் சேனல் தி நைட்டிங் ஹெல் டேல்ஸ் வி ஆர் புட்டிங் அவர் பெஸ்ட் எஃபர்ட்ஸ் டு ப்ரொவைட் யூ தீஸ் அப்டேட்ஸ் அண்ட் கொஷின்ஸ் ஸோ டோன்ட் ஃபோர் கெட் டு சப்ஸ்கிரைப் அவர் சேனல் If you have any doubts or queries regarding questions and answers, you can comment down in the comment section. We'll take time to reply you, but we'll surely reply you. Thank you. So let's get started. 1. Vertigo is due to problem in. So, in which of the, if the ear gets affected, there will be problem in central nervous system too and that is vertigo. So, vertigo is nothing but uh, losing your balance when you are in highest places or when you suddenly see down. So, that is the vertigo and uh, which part of the ear gets affected and ultimately results to vertigo. So, let's, uh, so the answer is inner ear. You can see here. it is inner ear and if inner ear gets affected so ultimately there will be problem and that is vertigo if inner ear gets affected there will be vertigo so next question epistaxis management includes the following except applying pressure by pinching the nose applying ice over the nose allowing the patients to patient to sneeze keeping the patient in sitting position with neck flexed so if you need to answer the question first you should know what is epistaxis epistaxis is nothing but bleed in nose nose bleeding so epistaxis is nothing but bleeding in nose or nose bleeding so pinching the nose comes under the management applying eyes also concerned with this management keeping the patient in sitting position with neck flexed is also comes under management of epistaxis the only option that doesn't concerned with the epistaxis or is contraindicated in epistaxis is allowing the patient to sneeze yeah this is the wrong answer here read the question carefully they are asking you accept so these three or option a b and c are done whenever there is epistaxis condition rises but allowing the patient to sneeze is completely contraindicated in epistaxis management so let's see the answer yes it is allowing the patient to sneeze you should not allow the patient to sneeze a patient who is bleeding so no sneezing so next question age related hearing loss is known as otosclerosis otitis media presbycusis and presbyopia so this is the easy question i think so uh, otosclerosis and otitis media these both are infections related to ear so these both are relate, uh, infections related to ear but presbyopia is vision loss is related to vision actually i so the only option relate, related to hearing loss or the only option that is remaining for us to answer you can blindly put this answer option c is the right answer as option a and b are infections and option d is related to vision so they are asking about hearing so option c is the right answer so let's see the answer yes it is presbycusis age related here you here you can see geriatric patient he is old he is old so old patients age related hearing loss is also known as presbycusis so next question color blindness is due to problem with a rods b cones c retina d cornea 
which part of the eye gets affected then it leads to color blindness so question is if one of these parts of eye gets affected then there will be a condition called color blindness so retina and cornea has nothing to do with color color interpretation of eye so answer will be either a rods or b so answer will be b because cones are considered with color interpretation so if cones gets affected then there will be color blindness in the patient here you can see these blue ones are cones and the red ones are rods sorry gray ones are rods next the drug that affects eye and causes ocular toxicity is so a amikacin b rifampicin c digoxin and e ethambutol so amikacin or gentamicin these are aminoglycosides they are they can cause you ear toxicity so it is not related with ocular toxicity amikacin causes ear toxicity you should remember this same goes for rifampicin to digoxin is a cardiac glycoside but overtaking this drug that is ethambutol leads to ocular toxicity ethambutol is one of those drugs which if taken without prescription or if taken without any intimations then it can cause ocular toxicity so over the dose of this this drug can can give a condition or can rise to a problem called ocular toxicity so remember this point guys next most common cause of blindness in india is cataract glaucoma refractive index vitamin a deficiency so these four are the option common cause of blindness in india is so if they ask in children then it will be vitamin a deficiency in children if the question they if the question asks like most common cause of blindness in india in children then you should answer vitamin a deficiency but they are asking in india they are asking like common so it is related to adults so in adults it is cataract yes the answer will be cataract because the most common cause for blindness in india is cataract if it is in children then it is vitamin a deficiency so here you can see uh, difference between a normal eye and uh, eye with a cataract the cloudiness of lens you can see there is cloudiness in lens so cataract is the most common cause for blindness in india so next question which cranial nerve is responsible for movement of eyeball so they are not asking any number there are 12 pairs of uh, um, cranial nerves but they are asking about uh, the name of the cranial nerve that is responsible for movement of eyeball so even if you don't know the answer you can decode it with the terminology so anything that is related to eye is termed as ocular ocular anything that is related to nose then it is termed as olfactory trigeminal nerve is related to nervous system or you can say blindly that is trigeminal nerve over face so vagus nerve is also not associated with eye the only answer you'll get is oculomotor yeah here you can see among the 12 pairs of cranial nerves third cranial nerve stands for movements of eye that is oculomotor nerve this is the pathway how it reaches and how it takes reflexes from eye movements so 
this is the answer guys oculomotor nerve cranial nerve is responsible for the eye movements in a human body so next question while instilling ear drops to an adult client so sorry this is an while instilling ear drops to an adult client the ear canal is straightened by pulling the ear, ear pinna so answer straightward backward downward and backward straight downward and upwards and backwards so if you are posted in an ENT ward so you have to instill a ear drop to a patient or an adult client so how will be the procedure will be you should carry out by pulling the pinna right so how should you pull the pinna there will be two steps uh, that the last step is pulling the backward so you should uh, interpret whether it is downward and backward or upwards or backwards so there will be difference in adults and adults and uh, children so the answer is upwards and backwards it is in adults as you can see in the picture the nurse is pulling the ear backwards and then this is backwards the ear is being pulled here upwards and then backwards then they are carrying out this ear installation ear drops installation process whenever they ask you what is it in children if it is in adults they are asking you particularly the adult client so adult client is upwards and backwards if they ask you in children then you can say blindly that it is downward and backward so the ear pin of a, ch a child or a kid should be pulled downward downward and then backward to install a ear drop if it is in adults don't forget if it is in adults then you should carry the processor like pulling the ear pinna upwards and backwards so here you will get two questions in the same one answer if it is in children then you should pull the pinna downward and backward if it is an adult it then you have to pull the ear pinna upward and backward so next question method of choice to remove ear wax is mineral oils cotton swab applicator otoscope warm normal saline irrigation so mineral oil mineral oils is completely contraindicated should not be uh, should not be used in uh, in the process to remove ear wax cotton is also not indicated cotton sh should not be used and otoscope is used to diagnosis for any ear problems so it is a, it's it is an instrument to used for the diagnosis purpose not to remove the ear wax so the only answer the only option we have now is option c that is warm normal saline irrigation if you guys have been posted in ent wards or ent op rooms opd rooms then you get to know about this warm saline irrigation uh, this is just a five minute procedure and uh, many of the pages uh, they do these processes so this is an easy procedure uh, mostly will remove after bathing casually by rubbing the towel but if the ear wax is so hard that uh, you can't remove uh, even by placing a soft normal towel then you should go for this process warm normal saline irrigation so you can see the patient is holding the kidney tray and the doctor or the practitioner is injecting normal saline into the ear so this is how they remove the hard ear wax in the ear in the ENT OPD rooms. So next question. Profound hearing loss is described when the sound is greater than. So the sound limit when whenever the sound limit crosses more than that range, then there will be profound hearing loss. So let's see which is that range. A 20 decibels, B 60 decibels, C 80 decibels, D 40 decibels. So 60 is a normal hearing range so we can hear these sounds the only highest 
hearing frequency we can't bear or we can uh, come across with this hearing loss condition is that it is option C 80 decibels so you can see more than 80 decibels if the patient if the patient or a client is get getting exposed to a sound frequency that is more than 80 decibels then there will be profound hearing loss so this condition arises if the patient uh, is getting exposed to a sound frequency more than 80 decibels so this is the answer guys so this is the video so don't forget to subscribe our channel the nightingale tales this is the only channel in the YouTube that is professionally supports all the Telugu nurses. So please comment down if you have any doubts and queries about questions and answers. We'll sure provide you with the answers and replies. So follow us on Instagram the Nightingale Tales 369. Don't forget to subscribe our channel. Like and share our videos to your friends who are in need. Thank you.